Welcome to Doors to Hope and Healing, an inside look at the many facets of work that is happening at the Department of Children and Families, between our staff, the families we serve, and our community partners. My name is Jacqueline Ford. I have had the honor of working for the department for almost 30 years. And although I may be familiar with many of the topics we bring to you, I have invited experts in those fields to help us dispel the myths and misconceptions that can often be barriers to our work. Join us as we open our doors and invite you to have a seat at our table. Well, welcome back to the set of Doors to Hope and Healing. Today, we still have our kid governor with us um, who's gonna talk about his platform and he's invited a special guest on today, uh, Mr. Loomis, um, who will introduce himself in a moment. But for the first time on the set of Doors to Hope and Healing, I'm going to turn this show right over to you because I know that as part of your three part platform on winning Kid Governor, it was to interview someone who you felt could shed a good light about physical education yeah. and physical fitness and how important it is to stay active so that you can stay healthy. So today, you're gonna to be doing the interviews of Mr. Loomis. So I'm gonna turn this show over to you and I'm gonna be here in case you have any questions or you need any help, but this is all your show. Okay. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. So go right ahead and, and begin your interview. Go okay. oh, easy on me, okay? <laughs> all right. Okay, I will. <laughs> Um, what inspired you to become the director for the Health and Physical Education P Department for Southington Public Schools? Great question. Um, it started a long, long time ago. When I was in high school, I went to Xavier High School in Middletown, and um, like many high schools around the state, we had to do some sort of community service. And I actually volunteered in Cromwell at one of the elementary schools with the PE teacher. And I realized how much I really enjoyed this. I was always an active person. And so I decided to go to college to become a physical education teacher. And my first job ever was um, at Naugatuck High School. And I had 12 amazing years teaching high school physical education at Naugatuck High School. Um, when I first started teaching, all I wanted to do was share how much I loved movement and activity with my students. And I wanted all my students to feel the same way about movement. Um, <clears throat> and so that was my focus, all my lessons, get the kids to enjoy it, to buy in, to love it. And as the years went by, um, I, I found some success with doing that and I wanted to expand um, my reach and I wanted to expand the impact I was having on students. So instead of just my own classes, I wanted to make my program bigger and better. And instead of my program after that, I wanted to make the entire district better. Um, so it just kind of grew from that. I, I wanted to have a, a really great impact, not just with my own students, but I knew I could impact positively more students by being a department leader, being a leader in some way, shape or, field, uh, shape or form within the field. And so. Um, I've really enjoyed that leadership position, um, but nothing compares to working with the students. That's, that's really the passion. Yeah. And I've also heard you've worked with my dad before. How is that? I have. He was awesome. I loved working with him. I love working with passionate um, educators and, and professionals that want to do the right thing. And um, it's just incredible. One of the things that we've done together, your father and myself, is we put an emphasis on um, what's going on inside of kids' bodies, what's going on with our hearts. That's the essence of physical education. It's, it's education about our bodies. And so um, your father has done a, a great job incorporating heart rate monitors uh, with, with uh, physical education. And so his students learn about what is actually happening when they're moving and how this is benefiting them. And it's a, it's a motivator for the teacher, it's a motivator for the students. And so I feel really lucky that I was able to work with your father for so long. I was there, I was in Wallingford for seven years as the wellness coordinator before uh, making the, the switch to um, Southington Public Schools. And I live in Southington, I live in town, and um, it's, it's really nice to be in the same town. Yeah. So I've heard you talking about heart rate monitors. Mm -hmm. um, do you think at some point we could work together to maybe like have elementary schools do heart rate monitors? High five, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We have to get this done. Um, 
I've had a very um, unique and honored uh, professional experience growing up. And um, one thing that I did is um, I was granted a sabbatical during my time in Naugatuck to earn my master's degree. So while I was at Naugatuck, I actually flew out to Iowa and I lived in Iowa for a whole year. I taught in this little town uh, while earning my master's uh, degree from the University of Northern Iowa. While I was teaching in um, Grundy Center Public Schools in Iowa, we had students wear heart rate monitors every time they had physical education, elementary through high school. And something else that was unique was students had physical education every single day. They got to move every day Sounds along with their cool. core class. It was awesome. It was amazing. Um, and so I have experience with elementary kids wearing heart rate monitors, learning about their bodies, and I am committed to working with you to make that happen. Yeah. All right. Um, what are your learning goals for students and teachers based on your expertise and as the Director of Health and Physical Education? Great question. Big question right there. Um, as a leader, I know it's important to get buy-in from my staff, from my teachers. And so something that one of the first things we did when I got to Southington is we worked on a vision statement. A vision statement explains what we're doing. And so I brought with me our vision statement that answers this question for you. Southington High School graduates are committed to the pursuit of healthy and active skills to achieve lifelong physical, intellectual, emotional, and social wellness. What we're trying to teach students is it's so important to be active. Find something you love, do that the rest of your life. Because if you do that, if you're active, if you pursue that, your quality of life will be so much better. You will be healthier, you will be happier. Uh, you, you won't just live longer, you'll enjoy those years so much more. Um, a term that I recently heard that I really love is finding our movement identity. So we want our students to discover how they like to move. What's their movement identities? We want our students to participate in the world, in our community, through movement. That's really the essence of what we're trying to do. It's a high bar, it's a high standard, but we know it's so, so, so important. Again, it improves our quality of life. Yeah. Um, what are your pros and cons of teaching physical education? <sighs> There's no cons. There's only pros. What can good, I say? Good. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, uh, there are many, many pros. Uh, I have a quote from Alan Russell that I want to share with you. Um, of all the subjects taught in school, Physical education is the only subject which, by the very nature of its content, has the potential to affect how a person will feel every day, every moment of every day for the rest of his or her life. So the pro is we can have such a positive, important impact on students, on kids' lives, um, not just for one subject, but for their entire life, potentially every moment. I make kids healthier, and health is real wealth. And so um, it's a noble profession. It's an important profession, and that's the biggest pro. Cons, it is hard work. Um, expert teachers spend approximately 60% more time planning than novice teachers. So an expert teacher spends that time um, outside of school, the little minutes they have in school, preparing and planning, and that, that is hard work, but it's so much fun that it's, it's well, well worth it. Nice. Um, how do you like to get active? Ah, so we're trying to develop movement identities in our students. It's important for us teachers to know what our own movement identities are. And I have six different movement identities. Right now, it's winter time, and I'm a snowboarder. So I like to go to Mount Southington and I like to uh, snowboard as much as I can. So that's one nice. way that I, I like to move. Um, it's also winter time and I get to work early. Uh, I get to Southington High School early and I go into our fitness center 
and I will run on the treadmill because I'm a runner. That's another movement same, identity same. I have. Same. Yeah, I knew I liked you. See? <laughs> um, so I like to run and I'll also strength train. That's a, that's a third movement identity of mine. I like to strength train. Um, a fourth, during the summer when the weather gets warmer, I love to play tennis. Tennis is really near and dear to yeah, my I've heart. I've been thinking of also doing tennis as well. I'll, I'll coach you. I'll help you. All right. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, disc golf uh, is really cool. Um, Southington has a nice uh, disc golf course at Panthorn Park. Wallingford has a beautiful course, Loughberry Park. So disc golf is another way that I, I'm active. Um, another thing I like to do. And last but not least, I love to hike. Give me a mountain and yeah. I'll be very happy. Um, so, so my movement identities, I have six of them. And when I can't do one because of weather or time of year or whatever, um, I can always find something else to do to stay active. And doing that helps me not just physically, but it helps me mentally, it helps me emotionally, it helps me socially. So there are so many benefits. And, and that's why I'm active and that's how I'm active. Yeah. Nice. Um, what would be one physical fitness tip that you could give our viewers today so that they could start incorporating into their daily activities? Great question. I struggled with this one, thinking about this, um, because there's so many different tips I would love to, to share out with everybody. But I think if I can only give one, it would be to find an activity that you like. Um, find a movement that you like. That is so vital, it is so important. Um, if we enjoy movement, and they've done research on this, if we enjoy movement, we get more out of it, we get more benefits from it um, compared to if we don't enjoy it. So if we force ourselves to go for a run, we're not gonna get as much out of it physiologically, uh, emotionally, socially, we're not gonna get as many benefits if we force ourselves to move. So my tip, as, fine, as far as fitness goes, is find something you enjoy. Keep exploring, keep looking, try something out. If you don't like it, try something else. Don't stop until you find something. What I really get frustrated with, or what makes me really sad, is when I hear students say, oh, I can't do that, or I'm not an athlete. We all are athletes. We might not be as amazing as Mr. O, but we are all athletes. We're yeah. all capable of athleticism. Um, just going for a walk provides incredible benefits. And so find whatever it is that you like. You know, the, the top reason that people do not exercise in our country, and this comes from the book called American Idol, I-D-L-E, by Mary Collins, who is a professor at CCSU, an English professor. Um, the top reason that people don't exercise, the research shows, is a claimed lack of time. I can't exercise. I don't have the time. I can't exercise. I don't have the time. So if you find something you love, you'll make the time. It'll yeah. happen. And one more quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Action expresses priorities. So again, find something you like. And if you find something you like, you'll make the time. You'll be active. You will find a way to do it. Action expresses priorities. Um, make that activity um, a priority, and you'll be all set. Yeah. Um, so, last question. Is there anything else that you would like to say or add? Um, per your platform, which I loved, and when I got the invitation, um, I was like, absolutely, I have to connect with this kid. I love it. Um, I want to tell you, keep fighting. This is so, so, so important, your platform of physical activity and, and of movement. Um, keep fighting. Um, this is really interesting. I'm of the belief, and there's a lot of research to support this. Movement act and activity does just as much, if not more, for our brains than it does for our body. I gotta say that again because it's profound. Movement and activity is just as much for our brains, if not more, than it is for our body. When we are uh, active, when we exercise, again, it helps us emotionally, it helps us socially, it helps us intellectually. Our brains thrive off of exercise and movement because when we're active, 
we increase blood flow and we increase oxygen and our brain works off of oxygen. So we need that. The best time you've got, I know fifth grade, you've got some tough work ahead of you. The best time to work on a tough project is right after soccer practice. Don't even shower, stinky, smelly, sit down and do your work because your brain is primed to help you focus, to help you be creative, to help you do that work. So keep fighting for this because it's, it's so important. Um, if we can get physical education every day here in Connecticut required by law, that would be incredible. Yeah. Physical education is required by law at the elementary schools, but not the amount. So that's something we want to work on. That's something we want to improve. We want to try to get kids active every single day. And what we see is if kids are active every day, they're actually going to do better academically. Kids that are physically fit have higher academic scores on standardized tests. So we want our kids to be active. We yeah. need our kids to be active. So what can we do, you and I, to get our kids active? What can we do to um, get physical education required every single day? You have just as much, if not a bigger platform than I do, I think. <laughs> so we can really impact this and make a difference. I think it would be cool. Yeah, same. Yeah. Well, I think there's a seat for you here at Nutmeg in the future for you to have your own show. You did a wonderful job. And Thank I think you. you two are a pretty powerful uh, <laughs> force to be reckoned with. I think that you two can do a lot of um, great work together. You know, as a, as a show host, you always hope that your um, guests are passionate about the topic. And I think that you, you have found that here in your um, interview with Mr. Loomis. How did it feel? It felt good. It, did, it felt good. So how often are you going to be doing interviews of different people throughout the course of this year? Um, I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to Mr. O for that one. Okay. So Mr. O is going to help you, help you develop that. Um, yeah. But so if our viewers are going to be able to watch your interviews on YouTube, is that the platform that you're going to be using to show your interviews um, and your blog? I think all that stuff for like the mm -hmm. videos. Um, Yes, mm -hmm. but I think it'll also be on my Bitmoji classroom, okay. uh, which is, I think, on the Kid Governor website. Perfect. Um, so we invite our viewers to visit the Kid Governor website for the state of Connecticut at the Democracy Center to learn about all the great things you're doing to try to enhance um, movement with, with our youth and with families exercising together. And I think this poster yeah. contest that you're having um, and, and youth getting together and saying, you know, this is what I want to do together with my family so that we're all healthy and our, our brains are active and we can be creative and do all that good work. So thank you so much for being a host, um, Mr. Loomis. Thank you for being Ooh. on our show. Yep. Thank you um, for was, inviting us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so to our viewers who are watching, if you would like more information about the Kid Governor program, you can visit the website. Um, and right now we're going to turn over to another video of our Kid Governor um, for 2024 and hear his inauguration speech and more information about the program. Thank you so much for watching. Good morning, fellow students, community members, the teachers of Connecticut, and all the special guests and dignitaries celebrating Inauguration Day here today, both in person and online. First and foremost, let me express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you who played a part in this amazing journey. I wanted to take a moment to express my sincere appreciation for the extraordinary work that the Connecticut Democracy Center has done for the Kid Governor Program. Your commitment to involving students in civics education and engagement, as well as empowering young minds to participate in the democratic process is truly amazing. To my dedicated cabinet members, Alexa, Claire, Donna, Max, Paula, and Ella, I'm looking forward to working with you on your platforms and joining together to make a difference in Connecticut. Last but not least, i like to take a moment to express my gratitude to some people right here in this room with me. Thank you to my dedicated teacher, Ms. Chavez, my enthusiastic school principal, Ms. Rogala, Superintendent, Mr. Medancy, the Southington Board of Education, Chairperson, Colleen Clark, and Town Council Chairperson, Mr. Chaplinski. And thank you to my supportive and encouraging classmates, and of course, my loving family that has always had me active from day one. 
Please join me in a round of applause for all of them. When I embarked on this journey to become your kid governor, I knew that I wanted to make a difference and to inspire positive change. That's why my platform, Getting Fit for Fun, will promote physical fitness in a very fun way. In a world that is getting more technology dependent each day, promoting a culture of fitness and well-being is not just a choice, it's a necessity. My first platform point is to create a Fit for Fun Kids video series. Picture this. Engaging videos showcasing fitness routines, physical activities, insightful interviews with professionals, and even videos submitted by students like you. Why? Because I believe that making fitness fun and accessible is the key to inspiring a generation of healthy individuals. Let's get moving together. Next on the agenda is my second platform point, coordinating a statewide poster contest focused on fitness tips. This is special because these posters will be made by kids for kids. The fifth grader whose poster wins the contest will have their artwork showcased on the Connecticut's Kid Governor website, shared with Kid Governor classes, and featured in my blog. This contest will not only display the artistic talents of our fellow fifth graders, but promote ways we can all work together to be physically active. And finally, my third platform point is the Fitcoin program. It sounds like Bitcoin, but it's not. It's a unique initiative designed to encourage physical activity in schools. The concept is simple. Get active, earn fit coins, and be recognized for your hard work. By making fitness a rewarding experience, we can develop healthy habits from a young age, inspiring a lifelong commitment to well-being. As I stand before you, I am filled with excitement and determination. Together, we can create a Connecticut where every kid is active, healthy, and happy. I look forward to the challenges ahead and the positive impact we will make on the lives of fifth graders in this state. In closing, let me just say that the journey has just begun. I'm eager to work alongside each of my cabinet members, Alexa, Claire, Donna, Ella, Max, and Paula, to make Connecticut a great example of positive student health across the nation. Let's move forward, get fit for fun, and build a future we can all be proud of. Thank you, Connecticut, for entrusting me with the honor of being your kid governor. It's time to hit the ground running, literally. <laughs>